SMT Nation, we back. Nation, T-Mobile just dropped some heavy news on us in regards to the network during their Q2 earnings conference. It's actually really important. It's really big from a technological standpoint, 5G adoption standpoint. Anyways, I want to talk about that here in today's video. A link for the uh, newsroom press release from T-Mobile on the quarter. I'll have a link for that for you guys in the description. Ways to support us can be found there as well. Please do like and share this video. Subscribe if you're new here and turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload from the SMT. All right, folks, we know that T-Mobile is the 5G leader. We know that they're the 5G GOAT, all things 5G. It's them. Uh, biggest 5G network, most available 5G network, fastest 5G network, all those things, right? And they they basically have been the first to a lot of 5G things, developments, right? So carrier aggregation and voice over NR and all these other things, like all this new technology, right? And they, they dropped this gem on us. I'm going to just scroll down here. So check out this uh, very particular uh, tidbit here from the, the earnings. 87% of 5G traffic carried on sites with three spectrum layers, delivering an incredibly consistent network experience. Now, let's just take that at face value. 87% of 5G traffic. So they're going to just take LT out of the equation. 87% of 5G carried on sites with three spectrum layers. It basically tells us that their network is very mature in respect to having all of the required radios and antennas for this particular three carrier setup. Okay, now carrier, we're describing channels, but it could be for carrier aggregation. In fact, that's something I want to clarify on this. All right, so these, these three spectrum layers are, are very, very straightforward. You have N71, which is a low band, 600 megahertz frequency. Typically, T-Mobile broadcasts like anywhere between 10 megahertz of bandwidth, I think all the way up to like 20 megahertz of bandwidth. I'm not sure if they broadcast uh, more than that. I know that they have made some deals with Comcast and... They've made some deals with uh, Columbia Capital and some other companies. They may have more in your market, potentially. The next you know, channel to discuss is the N25, which is the PCS spectrum. It's in the 1900 frequency. So that's more like your low-end, mid-band kind of frequency. Pretty good quality uh, you know, characteristic and propagation, good reach. Still works pretty well indoors and those types of things. Right, so it, that's and that's another thing. They're they're doing like twenty megahertz of bandwidth on N twenty five, and then where most of the capacity is coming from is from the N forty one, which they usually and typically run two channels. In my market, they have one hundred and eighty megahertz. They run a one hundred and an eighty megahertz two channel setup. So in in th this is kind of where I wanted to go with this, with respect to this setup, it they're not saying that. 87% of customers are utilizing three carrier aggregation. That's not what that means. They're saying that 87% of the 5G traffic is on sites that have those three frequencies on the tower sites. So it's not really, I don't want to say it's being disingenuous or misleading, but it's, it's, it's worded in a way that may confuse people and make them think something that it isn't. But the fact that they've got all these frequencies on all their sites for the most part, 87%, right, tells you that they've done a nice job to upgrade. Now, the most important thing is going to be, do you have a phone that can take advantage of these frequencies and the combination of the bands? Most people, I'd say like 99.9% .9 of people on the T-Mobile network have a 600 megahertz capable phone. And for those of you that have like a a 5g enabled iphone you know you're 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 probably good with two channel 5g uh i think that's what that phone can do and then i think you get with the newest iphones you're getting three carrier aggregation right so you can get the three channels you can get a 600 you get the uh the 1.9 gigahertz you can get the 2.5 gigahertz in fact some people i don't know it just depends on the configuration to the specific device it might be two channels of n41 and 171 right but it goes to show you that I think at this point in time, just based on the way things are going for the T-Mobile network and based on these configurations, you've got to be in a modernized phone. you got to get something that's newer that could take advantage of three carrier aggregation on 5G. Remember, T-Mobile runs a standalone 5G network that has multiple 5G channels. So if you're going to do the, the get the best experience, 
you're going to have to get a phone that is four carrier aggregation enabled. So that would be a 600 megahertz, a 1.9 gigahertz, and then two 2.5 gigahertz. And then starting next year, we're going to see an additional 5G carrier added to hardware where then we could start having the conversation about T-Mobile deploying C-band and DOD. That adds the N77 channel. So without trying to make it too confusing, when we talk about carrier aggregation, it's really channel aggregation. You know what I mean? It's really about the network adding additional bandwidth to these different carrier combinations. And T-Mobile is able to do this because of the T-Mobile and Sprint merger. The N25 piece came from Sprint. The N41 piece came from Sprint. They're doing good by kind of pushing their network forward in a 5G flow and adding those carriers each year, moving bandwidth from LT over to 5G like they did with N25, like they did with N71, like they did with N41. And then moving forward, you know, you and, and we still do see N66, although it's in a smaller bandwidth channel. You know, they've moved some of that in some places. Uh, but the next piece is going to be the C-band and the DoD in markets where they have the licenses. They do have C-band here in my market. I don't know if they have DoD or not. I don't think they do, but they may. It's possible in your market have both. That will be an additional carrier. You may be due for an upgrade. The newest iPhone should be able to do it. Uh, the, definitely the new Galaxy should be able to do it. Actually, you know what? The, the new iPhone might not be able to do it. Uh, that might be at four carrier aggregation. So you might want to hold off. You know, if you got like an iPhone 14 or 15, you might want to wait till next year to get that iPhone. If you've got like a Galaxy S21 or S22, an upgrade seems like it's in order. Get off of your two or three carrier aggregation phone for 5G. Get on the five carrier ad because, you know, starting next year, I think, and actually towards the end of this year, I think we start to see T-Mobile building up the C-band and the DoD. But I wanted to bring you guys some clarity on what they mean by those three channels. It doesn't mean that everybody's got a, you know, three carrier aggregation setup phone and connection on everywhere they go. It, they're just saying that on the tower sites, they have that stuff enabled. The hardware is there. Anyways, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. And then for those of you out there, if you can answer some, help people understand what's going on, we offer you some clarity. Uh, shout out to the nation for helping one another. We definitely are a network tech enthusiast community that is designed to help. Uh, if you have any questions on 5G and our specific devices there's probably some people out here in the nation that have the same phone as you or used to have it or they can help you find the resources uh and where you can identify what type of channel aggregation combos your phone is capable of doing and if you have any general network questions we could probably help out as well salute to you uh, for getting involved and engaged in the content thank you guys and we'll see you all on the next video peace